And what I also like to do, if someone is coming for holidays or special occasion, like say anniversary, I like to leave like a little bottle of champagne for them or like a little present. I do leave postcards that they can take home with them. I think those little touches make people feel very special. And that's why they keep coming back. This is episode number four, two of the Short Mental Success Stories podcast. Are you an investor that's looking to have your home professionally managed? Go to cohostit.com for more information. Welcome back to Short Term Rental Success Stories. I'm your host, Julian Sage. This is a show where I talk to hosts about their journeys in starting and growing their short term rental business. My goal is that you'll be able to walk away with practical information that will help you become a better host and learn how to scale your business. Like any exceptional host, we all strive for five star reviews. So please go on over to iTunes and let us know what you enjoy as it really helps support the show. If you haven't done so already, go on over to our Facebook group, The Host Nation, to connect with the community. Hey, what is going on, Host Nation? I'm super excited to be back again with you this new year, 2020. That is so crazy. Happy New Year to everybody. I'm still actually in Colombia at the time of this recording. I'm actually going to be in San Andres. I spent about a week in Bogota, but now I'm going to be going to a smaller island that uh, feels a little bit more like home. You know, being being a Florida boy, uh, going to the island is going to be super nice. But I wanted to say that this new year, it's going to be a really big one. Now, I know I know this past year a lot's happened from starting entrepreneurship again and getting into the Airbnb space and starting the podcast, starting a second podcast vacation rental machine with John Bell, creating a property management business and then actually getting my listing up and running and paying for my mortgage. Uh this has just been such an exciting year and I'm I'm super excited for 2020 because we have some really big things that we have planned. So if you are subscribed to the show notes at shorttermsage.com backslash show notes, then you probably saw my email where I was uh, talking about some of the stuff that we're going to be doing moving forward in 2020. Now I've got some really big goals and some really awesome plans. And just the amount of feedback that I get from the community is just so awesome and encouraging. Seeing the reviews and seeing you guys replying to these emails uh, really makes my day. So thank you to everybody that is doing that and continue to, you know, just comment in the Facebook group, the Host Nation Facebook group and keep me posted because I love reading every single comment and I do try to see every single message that is posted. Uh, but unfortunately, I'm not able to comment on every single one just because uh, I do I do have a lot going on. But there's a lot of stuff that I do want to be able to provide to be able to answer those questions that I do see coming up over and over again. 2020 is going to be a year where we're going to be providing even more value. So if you've been having a lot of value from the success stories and vacation rental machine, which I know you have because a lot of people have been commenting about that, but I want to provide even more value. And John and I have been working on some really exciting stuff that we plan on releasing. Probably within the next couple months, we will start really um, start pushing this stuff out there. Uh, but uh, I'm super excited. You know, just stay tuned. There's going to be more awesome stuff coming and there's going to be some really cool stuff coming with co-host it. For those of you that don't already know, co-host it's our management company and we're also doing turnkey arbitrage properties. So super exciting. 2020 is going to be the year that we take over the world, guys. Thank you so much. And let's just jump into this episode. And in this episode, I have the special honor of speaking with Irina Roth. Irina is a real estate agent who specializes in vacation rentals in the St. Pete, Florida area and also manages a portfolio of 13 short-term rentals. Irina has been managing short-term rentals for the past five years and she really is the whole package from finding the property to staging and designing all the way to management. She really is an investor's dream person because she does everything. Irina has found her niche and there's a lot of insightful information that you can take away from trying to build your own co-hosting business. Irina talks about how she got into the short-term rental business and scaled to 13 properties, her experience specializing as a vacation rental real estate agent, and how she manages her properties. So if you like my show notes for this episode, go to shorttermsage.com backslash str42, or if you like my show notes sent directly to your inbox every week, then go to shorttermsage.com backslash show notes. With all that being said, on to this week's conversation. Hey, welcome back, Host Nation, to another episode of Short-Term Rental Success Stories. In this episode, I have the special honor of speaking with Irina Roth. Irina, would you please introduce yourself, let the Host Nation know who you are and what inspired you to get into short-term rentals? Uh, yes, hi. Thank you so much for having me. Um, my name is Irina, and I'm originally from Russia. Moved to the States about 13 years ago and um, kind of jumped into real estate business. I am a licensed realtor here in Pinellas County in Florida, and I manage 13 properties. Um, so I think my mom inspired me to be in this business because she was a realtor herself, and she was the first one to open short-term rental business in the city where I'm from. Uh, I kind of got inspired by it, and I saw 
you know, I have so much passion for it. And I saw her passion and how she does things. And I really, really liked it. So sure enough, when I moved to Florida, I realized that we're in the perfect location to do this business. And we have the beautiful beach and attractions and everything, kind of a recipe for success. So I I think I would give it to my mom for inspiring me. That's for sure. <laughs> so, so your mom was operating short-term rentals, vacation rentals in Russia? Yes, she was. Wow. And how many was she, she managing at that she actually, so she was kind of a co-host on most of them, but she also had a bunch of her own properties. Um, I think at one time she probably had about 20 of them. Um, and it was all in downtown uh, Krasnoyarsk, which is where I'm from. So it was mostly done for business people that go on business trips and kind of for that reason, um, because we really don't have much going on in Siberia. <laughs> So we had a lot of business trips to accommodate, um, and she was great at it. So in oh, that, that is so interesting. So your mom was operating these short-term rentals in Siberia uh, to business travelers, and she was she was doing this full time. Yes, she was doing it full time. Uh, she was also at some point, um, like I said, a real estate agent, and she she kind of got into that business, and it just you know kind of helped her. Um, she was doing it full time. She built her business and she probably had it for about uh, 20 years altogether. Um, and then she decided to move here to be with me. So about five years ago, she kind of passed that business to somebody else, sold it and moved back here. Wow. So you, you've you grown up around vacation rentals and this atmosphere. And it so sounds like real estate's really just been with you for your whole life. How, how was that coming to uh, the United States and then in St. Pete? And then getting your license and then starting to, you know, follow the family tradition and pick up uh, vacation rentals as well. Well, it wasn't easy, <laughs> um, but I definitely enjoyed the process. And uh, about five years ago, I actually started doing it full time. I got my real estate license, uh, which was it was pretty good. Um, it wasn't that you know difficult. Uh, I started selling real estate kind of right away. And in the meantime, I was just trying to figure out how to become a co-host or how to take on more properties. And so, for example, you know, five years ago, we only had two of our family properties on the beach in Treasure Island. And then we got another one and we bought another one, actually. And then all of a sudden, people started coming to me and asking, hey, uh, we would like to try this Airbnb business. You know, that sounds like a good idea. And I said, sure. And they said, we don't know anyone who knows it better than you. So can you help us? And I said, absolutely. So last year I had one client of my own. And then this May, I actually got just a bunch of clients sent to me by referrals, word of mouth. And right now we have 13 properties. It is absolutely amazing. And I just love every second of it. It is so much fun. <laughs> so so you got your real estate agent. You you purchased this property because you wanted to short-term rent it. Um, and then it just kind of grew organically. People saw that you were operating and they said, hey, can you help me out? And for uh, for quite a few years, you only had one one client. So mm -hmm. it was your property, your one client. But then this past year, it just blew up. Absolutely. I did. I I had to open my own company. I'm like, okay, we need to make it official. <laughs> so, um, yeah. And I, I mean, it's great because people have so much trust in me and I really, really appreciate it. And they keep referring their family and friends. And this is actually how I got a few of my first clients. Um, they were traveling um, to purchase a property in Florida. They're from Canada. I think originally they speak Ukrainian and Russian. So we kind of, you know, vibe because of that. Um, so they came to Florida, they were looking to buy. Naturally, I helped them buy and I told them exactly which type of property they need, how much money they can make. We closed on the deal and they said, just take it because we know you can, you can take it from here, you know, and you can make, make profit for us. So I said, sure thing. And then it just kind of, started happening more and more and I have a bunch of Russian clients. So that kind of helps because I speak Russian and they can, you know, they don't have to speak English or worry about translating. So I don't know. It just kind of organically grew. Wow. Irina, that is so cool. <laughs> that is so awesome. So I, I think that that's such a really good combo. And I want to I want to hit on the real estate aspect because this, that's pretty, uh, pretty unique. Mm -hmm. um, with your license, though, uh, you got your license. And were you specifically targeting short-term rentals? Because you said you had one client for about uh, about four years until this year it really took off. 
Um, so at that time, w were you just trying a bunch of different things or were you trying to do more uh, residential and then you s switched to vacation? How, how was that progression? It kind of was a smooth transition on its own. I didn't really do anything. Um, I know you should probably have a niche in real estate to be different because I've noticed how like some of my uh, friends are in commercial real estate that I have no idea about. But um, that's how you, you are successful, I feel like. So I started with residential because it was like the easiest thing to do. And I had friends who were looking to move into, um, you know, three bedroom, two bath, single family home, very, you know, very normal. Um, and then all of a sudden I started getting those investors, um, especially because I speak Russian. It kind of helped with my Russian investors as well. And they all started telling me, you know, we just want to buy a second home in Florida. It's a perfect place. I said, okay. And I just kind of transitioned into that niche that I now have. Um, and on top of it, my fellow real estate agents actually refer their clients to me. So they go ahead and they help them purchase the property. So it's not like it's my deal. However, from there, I can take on the management and I can actually help them set it up the way it's supposed to be. So they kind of just say, okay, here's my client. We know you'll take care of them. You know, go ahead. <laughs> um, so that's really nice because it's the same people referring people over and over, which is. Ah, Arita, that's so cool. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> so how, how, how did you, because that, that's, that, that's like a double niche being Russian mm -hmm. and short term rentals. Uh, but I think it's really cool is that you had other people referring you business. How, how are you able to uh, set yourself as being the person that even other real estate agents would be sending their, um, their clients to so you could run the numbers? How, how did you get position yourself into that place? <laughs> I didn't really advertise it in any way. Um, but yeah, kind of a little bit because I would just post my new listings on, you know, Facebook, Instagram. And I just kind of noticed they started reaching out to me and saying, oh, we didn't know you specialize in that. Well, this is good to know. This is good to know. And I just started meeting a bunch of different real estate agents and they all ask for coffee meetings. And I said, sure, absolutely. And I think what they struggled with, because we live in such a area, I wouldn't say it's like a tourist area, but we do have a lot of visitors and we have so many people buying second homes or vacation homes that they kind of ran into this problem where they would have a client, say, from Canada visiting, you know, kind of trying to see what they can buy here and know what type of vacation rental they can get for them that can actually make them money. So they ran into this issue and they would just naturally reach out to me and ask just kind of for some tips and advice on what type of property they should be even looking at. Um, and I would just kind of guide them where they should go um, because at first they would start buying those huge, beautiful homes that you cannot really rent on Airbnb. You can, but you cannot make that much money and it just wouldn't be profitable. And I would tell them, don't do that. How about you just put your money into this? And they said, thank you so much because it makes us look so much better that we know what we're talking about. So, you know, that's why I say you have to have a niche because otherwise you have to refer, refer people out. But the, my fellow agents, they're good at other things that I don't usually, you know, kind of take, like say short, um, short sales or foreclosures. I don't usually work with those. And so that's good. So I can kind of go to them for that. Um, and then they can send their clients to me. I feel like it's a good dynamic, you know? So having, you know, it, it is important and I want to hit on this, that being able to identify a short-term rental property versus uh, just a traditional property, there, there is a big difference. And that's why there's people that are specifically, you know, targeting this niche. Uh, what, what makes a good short-term rental property versus a bad short-term rental property? Let's just say in, in your market. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I can talk about it a lot, <laughs> so I'll try to summarize it. Basically, first thing you need to look at is the zoning because Pinellas County can be very different. It really depends on the town you're in. Uh, some properties in St. Pete, you may be able to rent short term. Some of them are only, say, six months minimum, and that's not how you're going to you know, make any money. Um, so I would say the best types of properties would be in a close location to the beach because that's very important. Um, I've noticed that a lot of guests search for that. They want to be close to the beach or say five minutes away. Um, so that would be uh, zoning first, location, and I would say just run your numbers really because you don't want to be investing so much money into this big beautiful property and only be able to rent it on weekends. We do manage different types of properties. We have single family homes with pools, you know, beautiful, great for families. And then we have little studios on the beach that are 
90% occupancy rate. You see, because those give two, three days at a time, it constantly stays booked. You get crazy amount of people in and out. The property is immaculate because we come in and clean between you know each guest. So it's always like it's a quick turnaround and the owners make pretty good money on those. Um, and then they only invested say $150,000 just to buy that property versus a nice beautiful home that costs say $450,000. So you're already putting more money into it plus your bills and you know all of those things to maintain it. And they only rent it on the weekends. But when they rent it on the weekends, it's not a bad thing because yes, it's sitting empty. However, on those weekends, you could charge way more money. It's going to be two to three families traveling. So that's a totally different type of property. And you need to understand that. That's what I kind of help my hosts with. I, I tell them exactly like how much money do you have and how much we can maximize your income by you know, just selecting the correct type of property and seeing if you're going to meet those numbers and kind of looking in the area too, like how are other people doing and what are they doing and how much they're charging. So we run through all those numbers. I think it's very important because I don't want my clients to be disappointed. So I kind of help with all that. And how, how do you come up with those numbers? Are you using any tools or using comparables? What What's your process for finding those? So I know some people use... Um, I don't know if I'm allowed to say the names of those companies, but I think it's Air DNA or something like that, where they kind of compound everything together. I actually do it manually because I feel like it's more accurate and I can focus on specific areas and kind of see, I read the reviews. If it's bad reviews, I make sure that I take it and turn it around and we don't do those things. You know, I make sure that we kind of, uh, we're being proactive. So I look at a lot of different factors and then I see how much they charge for a high season, I kind of go in and look through their listings, you know, just, just doing those things. And it does take a little bit of time. But when it comes to uh, my client's money, I can't just be, you know, promising you're going to make so much money. And in fact, it's not, it's not how it's going to be. So, you know, I don't mind spending a few hours researching. And now I kind of know off the top of my head how much you can charge, but I always try to be very specific. And now what about, what about furnishings? Are you, are these, these are empty properties? Uh, are you the one that is coming up with the design? Because obviously the price point is also going to be dependent on the amenities, the uh -huh. uh, style of the property. Are you going in there with an idea of how much they should be spending up front? Are you advising them on like how much they should spend on furnishing and what type of furnishing? Uh, so how do you come up with those numbers? That's a good question. I'm glad that you asked because some properties come already furnished and turnkey. Some of them are empty. Um, one of my clients just bought an empty house. I mean, there's really nothing in there. So we had to, well, he had to invest a lot of money up front. And it's a big place too. Um, I do tell them exactly what to buy. We, I feel like I have so much experience with it now that I know what type of furnishings and linens and everything you need to you know, purchase because you want it to be durable, but you don't want to be spending crazy amounts of money because the second it's ruined, you have to go and replace it. So we're kind of trying to be very practical. Um, I would give them the list of things that they have to purchase. I have a list of inventory that has to be in each place. Um, and I know how to furnish a three bedroom home versus a studio and kind of come up with the overall feel of the place. And we try to keep it put a little bit of design into it and, you know, kind of decorate it nicely. Um, I do have my uh, degree in home staging as well. So that kind of helps me. I actually use it for real estate most of the time. But then when it came to Airbnb places, I just said, listen, let me just set it up the way it's supposed to be and make it functional yet beautiful. And then, you know, you don't have to worry about replacing all those expensive items. We can actually make it look really nice and you don't have to break the bank. So that kind of helps. <laughs> um, so yes, I do help them with that. And I, in the initial consultation that we have, I tell them to expect to spend X amount of money on the investment on top of purchasing the property. Irina, you're, you're a whole package. You're the real oh, estate no. agent, the property manager, and the designer. Man, you're, you're awesome. <laughs> it's so cool. So one of the things that I did want to ask, though, was your returns. Are you aiming for a certain type? type of return on investment with these properties? Um, or uh, how, how do you how do you give a good baseline? So when someone's coming up to you and they say, hey, I want to invest in a property, how do you know um, like when they should be getting that return back? Or are they just looking for cash flow? What, what's the, the baseline that you're going for? 
I think since uh, the scale of my company is still very small, I'm able to actually be very uh, kind of customize each each property and uh, pay a lot of attention to each of my clients because some of my clients, they honestly just want to buy it cash, furnish it inexpensively, you know, get it all rented and be able to pay their HOA fees or association fees. They don't really, they're not looking to make a lot of money. So, and of course I ask what your goal is and all of that before we even start the process. So some of them are okay with the way it is. Now, some of my clients, they put a lot of money into it. So they would like to, they would like for it to make sense to them. And that's what we talk about as well. So there is really not any specific number that we're looking for, you know, kind of like a generic uh, margin, I guess, but it really depends on their needs. And I'm able to provide that because, you know, I can actually take my time with them. So that helps. So after, after that, you had that first property that you were managing at around four years, you things really started to change were you doing anything different where it really was a tipping point where you started getting a lot more referrals and getting a lot more short-term rental business uh what what was that change very good question (laughs) i honestly don't know how it happened but i think what helped um i think i mentioned that earlier would be maybe social media um like i said i didn't pay for any advertising or anything but just the word of mouth and maybe being exposed to so many uh, real estate agents and to so many clients that kind of helped get the roll, uh, the ball rolling. And um, I do have a lot of investor clients that, you know, I kind of keep uh, in my phone. So this way, if anything comes up, I can say, hey, there's a property coming up for sale would be perfect for Airbnb. And I think that just kind of how it goes. I didn't do anything special. However, I think that, you know, that exposure helped. And and he- here we are. <laughs> so what what how how do you go about finding those types of investor clients that that would uh, be interested in short term rentals? A lot of uh, a lot of my clients are naturally looking for a vacation home, and what they do is they just ask, "Hey, you know, I just want to get something here in Florida that I can come and visit, say, a couple months out of a year. But the rest of the year, I don't know what to do with it, and I just offer, "Hey, I can manage it for you, and we can turn it into vacation rental. At least it will pay your bills or." Whatever your goal is, you know, we can figure it out, but at least you wouldn't have to pay out of pocket for all of the maintenance expenses and all of those other things. And they say, this is a great idea. And we just kind of take it from there. So a few of those people definitely were just looking for their own vacation spot. And they visit maybe once a year for a couple of weeks, but for the rest of the time, it sits, you know, empty and I can rent it on, on Airbnb and other platforms. So. But uh, but how how are you finding these people? Are these all coming through like um, like referrals, or are these coming through like just you going out and networking? So uh, some of them are referrals, which I would say most of them are actually, um, and mostly internet um, websites like ZillowRealtor.com, there, and they choose me as an agent, and then they contact me to help them with the purchase of a property. So you're using tools like Zillow to be able to find. Uh, clients? Well, they actually find me. Um, some of them were Russian speaking clients and what they did, they just went on Zillow, I believe, or realtor.com and they typed in, you know, Russian speaking agent in Tampa Bay, for example, and I would pop up and they would read my reviews and all of that. So they can actually make a decision to contact me. So it works great, you know, and I feel like internet is a is a great tool. <laughs> so so you, don't, you don't even have to do like door docking or anything. You have everybody that's coming and finding you and then they, they, they pay you to find the property and then they also pay you to manage the property and stage it and everything. That sounds right. <laughs> <laughs> Man, you're, you're, you make this sound so easy, Irina. <laughs> uh, I wish it was, but you know, I mean, you have to just build good relationships with your clients and other people that you meet and your friends. And they always think of you first before referring to someone else. And I feel it's very important. And I do this with my friends who have their own businesses. I feel like that's how you support each, each other. You can't just, you know, you have to do that. <laughs> and, and going off of that, what, what has been the most challenging part of starting your short-term mental business? A very good question. <laughs> um, Honestly, I guess to me, it was, I didn't know how to manage so many clients or how to organize the whole business because 
I mean, it's a little bit different than being in Russia, you know, and, but luckily nowadays you have so many tools that you can use and property management programs and, you know, everything is on your phone. I think I was afraid that I wouldn't be able to, you know, manage it correctly uh, or find the clients, but it was a very smooth transition because it didn't happen all at once. So (laughs) I think that really helped. And of course, having my mom's, you know, input on things, she kind of helps me with some tips and tricks. So that that really helped, I think. And and what about scaling this business? Because you went from having essentially like what two or three properties, to now in a in in as you know short as a year, you have uh you know ten ten or you have ten pro or thirteen properties total, and you're about to take on five more. Yeah. Um. How how is that scaling been? Um, again, I mean, it's just a returning client and he's an investor. So that really helps, um, you know, and he just offered me to manage more properties that he has. Um, I think now I will just have to hire more people and kind of have someone else to help with reservations and those sort of things. Um, and I think it's just going to go up from there as well. So we just have to make sure that we keep the quality that we're providing to our clients or we have to make sure we keep the guests happy just like we used to because I've noticed that a lot of companies that do management uh, for vacation rentals, they're, they kind of put it on an automatic thing. Like it, there's no, nothing personal and it's just they don't answer their phone calls or messages and I feel like it's totally unacceptable. I will never be one of those people and I think that's why you should have a good team. So that's my next goal is to you know kind of bring more people on board and start you know, kind of like continue with a good quality, but start taking on more properties and making other people happy. I think it would be great. You, you said you had one investor client. Uh, th- th- is this one investor client the one that uh, gave you the 10 properties for you to manage? No. So these are all different people. Um, each property is, you know, each their own, uh, cl- uh, their own owner. Um, now this investor has, I'm only managing one right now for him. And then he has a bunch more and he has an ability to bring in more properties if it would make financial sense to him, um, which I think is great. And, and can you talk a little bit about the uh, five properties that you're, you're uh, taking underway right now and what your role is with uh, the development of those? Uh, yes. So those are not your typical properties. Those are little cabins that we have. Uh, they're on the lake in Pinellas County. It's very, very cool. Like they have that rustic feel and, you know, they're fully furnished and they look, they look pretty cool. I love them. And the fact that you're on the the lake kind of gives you that, you know, like feel like you're in the woods and you can like take your kayak or go pedal boarding there. It's, it's like a one of a kind type of property, really. So I'm really excited about that. And I think we are starting on those this week. So we have to set it all up and get the ball rolling. And, and, but you said that those are already furnished, so you don't have to be a part of the design or anything like that. It's already turnkey. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So they're turnkey. The only thing I think we need to do is get the linens, the correct, all of those, you know, the little items. And we also like to have our kitchens fully equipped. So I have to make sure that the inventory is there so we can start the process. Now, with with uh, ten different uh, co-host clients, um, I mean that that's a lot of different types of people that you have to interact with. Um, are there any types of clients or any types of situations that you've learned since starting off? That you know, uh, five years now you've been you've been dealing uh, or working on this. Um, is there anything that you've learned from maybe first starting off to what you're doing now that maybe you wouldn't do? One thing I would do earlier i would start sooner <laughs> managing those properties um because i think it's a great business i did learn a lot and it's only been you know a few years so i i think i have a lot more to learn of course but i think every day almost we run into situations when i'm like okay next time i'll do it differently and i can't think of anything right this moment but it, it really depends and because each client is different you just kind of have to be flexible with them um but all of my clients are pretty awesome. They are just so nice. And they I think when they have the trust in you, it makes it a little bit easier. So they don't like get too controlling or, you know, kind of suspicious of anything that we're doing. So I think I think I learn every day, I will tell you that. Um and especially with the guests that we host. Um now we kind of started being more I don't know, selective, I would say. We don't just approve everyone. We're just kind of trying to take on quality guests, which 
makes our properties, you know, kind of saves the condition of the property and maintains it. And I don't know, you, you kind of get less troubles, I guess, with those types of clients. So, yeah. And what, what are you doing to set these units apart? Are you the one that is also helping with, uh, you said that you do some of the staging, but um, are you um, like advising clients to make corrections or to do different things? Um, what, what are you making those units to be able to stand out? Uh, St. Pete, I imagine, is a pretty uh, competitive market. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And, um, you know, first things first, I think the most important thing for guests across the world would be cleanliness, which is huge i know i wouldn't want to travel anywhere where it says the unit wasn't that clean so we keep it absolutely immaculate because i mean this is the most important thing you have a good team of cleaners you know you check every time they clean your property it's very important to maintain it this way um and then number two i would say i mean nice decor is very important um and we kind of try to think of everything ahead of time we try to make it look like it's a home away from home. So I think that really helps. And what I also like to do, if someone is coming for holidays or special occasion, like say anniversary, I like to leave like a little bottle of champagne for them or like a little present. Um, I do leave postcards that they can take home with them. Um, one of my clients actually offered, it was her idea. She wanted to leave um, metal straws because that way we can save the planet, you know, and we are by the beach. So we want to make sure there's, you know, no plastic and St. Peter's really strict about that. Um, so she buys those metal straws for guests to take with them, which is really cool. I think those little touches make people feel very special. And that's why they keep coming back, which is very important. And, you know, they refer their family and friends to us too. And they say, we stayed here last year. We want to come back. We loved it. That's what we want to hear. <laughs> Clean, cleanings, like you said, it's such an important part of the business. And you have, uh, you know, thir 13 properties about to have 18. Uh, I mean, that that's a lot of work. Uh, and you have, you said two cleaners. Are these like full-time cleaners at this point? Are they just like working nonstop with you? Yeah. So my parents oversee the cleaning, you know, part of the business. And they, they have, so it's two of them. And then they have a couple more cleaners that do specific types of properties. And you have to think about like if you have a single family home that's over 1,500 square feet, that's a lot of, you know, room to clean. And they have to make sure that they have somebody there almost the entire day sometimes to make sure everything is the way it's supposed to be. Um, and then for smaller properties, they can just do it themselves if they have to. So we definitely have to be able to delegate but control the quality. And I think we've been doing a good job so far. So we'll just strive to be to be on the same level. Yeah. And you said that your, your parents are also involved in the business. Are, are they, are, is there anything that they're doing uh, to manage cleaners or to uh, make sure, because I mean, your, your, your mom already has, she has 20 years experience, you know, uh, has, has a lot of experience in, in the space. Uh, are there things that she's doing or that you're doing with um, managing these types of properties that maybe other people aren't aware of or not doing that maybe they should be doing? Um, I think the most important thing is the quality control. I know that my parents are very particular on who they hire to clean those types of properties. And they like to inspect every single cleaning. <laughs> I know it may seem like a lot, but um, those inspections are very important. And I think it's important for my clients as well, because they know their property is always going to be in a good condition. I would say Always inspect for cleanliness. Always check your appliances, check your TV to make sure that the next guest who checks in, they don't have any issues with, oh, our TV is not working or the um, light bulb is out. You have to be very proactive and kind of think of those things the next person comes in. So they're on top of that. And I mean, I know it sounds like a lot of work, but I feel like it's very rewarding. Um, and that's why if you look at our reviews, we have you know, 4.9, I believe, is the lowest that we have. And it always says that it was sparkling, sparkling clean. It's beautiful, you know. And I feel like that's what drives our guests to book with us. With, with, with managing cleaners, I mean, that, that's always a hot topic with short-term rentals. With going to a property and making sure that it is done right, is there... Is it just because maybe we don't trust our cleaners enough to, for them to be able to maintain that standard? You, or because after you've seen them perform a certain amount of times, um, 
and and be able to clean a place and they have you know good cleanliness shouldn't they just be able to do it on their own or what's the reasoning behind having to verify every single cleaning well sometimes it can get a little overwhelming when especially i believe like on sundays we have the most amount of check-ins and checks checkouts so yes it's not going to be nine I would say 95% of the time they would be coming in and checking on those on those cleaners. But of course you do train them specific ways. So at some point you don't have to control them. But I I, I think they like to come out and just kind of check on the overall condition and make sure like there are some maintenance items that the cleaners are not supposed to be doing, obviously. So they just kind of, you know, come in and take care of those as well. Um, and it is a sensitive topic because to find those types of cleaners it's not an easy task. You know, a lot of people have their own, I guess, <laughs> they think clean is, this is clean for them, but it may not be clean for, you know, up to our standards. And what my parents do, why they take so much time training is because um, a lot of people come from residential cleaning, which is totally different than Airbnb or short-term rental cleaning. And they may not understand it. And so we talk about, leaving the toilet paper roll on, on, you know, kind of unripped. So like you have to put a brand new roll of toilet paper. You have to make sure everything is even and it has to be at a certain angle, angle, uh, refill the shampoos, you know, do all those things. And sometimes those cleaners might not even think that this is important. So those little things we always have to make sure are there so we can keep it consistent, you know, throughout all properties. I think that's what takes the most time. <laughs> Is there is there like a formal checklist that um, you guys go through or is it as it by now, everybody kind of knows what they're supposed to do? We have a list. Um, and I think the first time you clean for us, you kind of look at it. <laughs> but we do train in person and kind of show everything. And so by the time they clean their third property, they already know. But because each property is also different, they story and where everything. Because one time we had guests who rearranged all of our decorations. <laughs> and so the cleaners went in and they had to go and put things where they're supposed to be. Sometimes they open the app and they look on Airbnb pictures just to make sure that's where that stuff goes, which I know is kind of silly, but you would want to keep it cohesive. So <laughs> no moving stuff around. Is there anything that you do that has helped your guests leave positive reviews? I actually follow up with them and I ask to make, I ask them, how they're doing and if there's anything that they need one thing that i've noticed it's been very useful is to send a message after checkout to you know kind of thank them for being with us and choosing to stay at our property and asking them if everything was good and if everything was great you know during their stay could you please leave them that anything below five stars is usually negative for airbnb and other platforms so if they want to leave a review you know kind of do it wisely um and if they have any feedback or suggestions we're open to it and we like to take it into consideration so i think that really helps with reviews especially because now they realize okay you know everything was really good and we'll give you five stars like there is really nothing during your stay that was you know alarming or unpleasant and is there anything that you include in your units that has saved you time and money um, <laughs> nothing that I can think of. Um, what would you, what would you consider? Uh, so, so a lot of people sit, might say like, uh, they might include security cameras. They might include like smart locks. Oh yeah. Uh, could be, could be like a particular type of towel or. <laughs> yeah, actually that's a good question. So uh, in terms of towels, we do put little, I think they're like washcloths, but they're uh, color black because this way when they take their makeup off, it doesn't stain the white towels that we usually offer. Uh, and we put like a little sign that says, you know, for makeup only. And people love it because they don't have to worry about ruining any linens. Um, so that's one thing we like. And sometimes we'll put a few notes here and there with instructions. It depends on the property. Um, and of course we use smart locks, which is super important <laughs> because I remember back when I started, we had little lock boxes and everyone had to put a code in or you have to actually go give them a key. We don't do that anymore because guests can lose the keys and, you know, it's just not convenient for anyone. Um, smart lock is the best. And some of my properties already have security cameras, 
which we honestly luckily didn't have to use in terms of, you know, kind of going back and looking at the footage. Um, and I know you have to disclose those, so you have to be very, very careful. Um, I think it's important to have them, but not everyone wants to put them up, and I respect it. So, but that definitely, those are good tools. I think they do save you lots of time and, and money, really, in the long run. And is there one hash rule that you've started including that has saved you before? One house rule. I mean, keep the noise to a minimum <laughs> between certain hours because neighbors will complain. Um, we have a lot of house rules now I, that I think about it. How, how many? Um, our instructions are pretty long with the rules and manual and everything. Um, a lot. And again, it depends on the property. Like we have a house with a pool that is, you got to be very careful with those types. Of, of homes because if you're traveling with a child and the child goes outside, you know, you have to make sure that you let the guests know to, to be kind of on top of that. They cannot just let their kids run around and, you know, get in a bad situation. So those types of rules. And we also have just normal stuff with the dryer and washer. Like I just discovered you're not supposed to dry your towels that have sand on them, which is, we are right by the beach, but that sand actually makes the dryer leave um, little black marks on linens. We didn't know what it was before, but then I called the technician and he said, this is your beach towels that are being, you know, kind of dried in the, in the dryer. So I'm like, okay, we went ahead and put a sign up, of course, <laughs> kind of let people know that, you know, don't do that because then you'll be charged for it and no one's to do that. Um, and I would just say the first thing we ask is just to treat this place as, as if it's your home and kind of leave it the way you found it. We don't make people wash their own linens or do the dishes, but we would respect if you if they would take the trash out at least. You know, kind of helps a little bit because if we cannot be there on time to clean after them, we don't want the place to you know smell bad or anything like that. So just I feel like those are common sense items, but you almost have to type out too many <laughs> too many things just to prevent any problems. Um, but a lot of people respect it and they, they read through it and they're fine. So. And if, if you could give, if you, if you could restart, if you could go back uh, five years or to your first property, what would you do differently if you had to start from scratch? I think I already said that I would start sooner than that <laughs> because I did like, um, I didn't even know about Airbnb probably five and a half years ago. And then I discovered it and I said, wow, why didn't I use it sooner? Um, so definitely that. And I would probably start working on getting my own Airbnb properties more than anything um, because I really, really enjoy it. And managing other people's properties is absolutely amazing, but I would also like to have my own, um, which I'm working on right now. <laughs> um, yeah, I think, I think that's it. And really, I think it's a learning process, so you're going to get there. You just have to be very, you just have to be open to read more information about how things are done. And I guess trial and error would be, you know, the best experience that kind of teaches you. Moving forward, would you be more focused on scaling the property management aspect or the real estate transactions? <laughs> Good question. You know, I like both. So I honestly don't know if I can pick. It's it's almost, I cannot live without either or right now. Um, but I do like having the Airbnb business, property management business going because you can scale it and still provide good customer service. And I don't see why I shouldn't have it going, you know. Um, and real estate transactions, I guess it all depends on the market. But I feel like where we are in our area, you always will have people buying vacation homes and you just, you can't avoid that. So we'll see what happens. Is there anybody else in your market that is really kind of dominating the uh, vacation rental niche or is, is this really something that maybe not enough people are taking advantage of in their particular markets? I honestly don't know anyone else who advertises or kind of positions themselves as vacation rental specialist in real estate. I know I don't think I know anyone. And I actually work with a lot of realtors, like I said, who specialize in other things. And pretty much all of them tell me they don't really know that market that well. They kind of guess by 
I mean, just using common sense, they know, okay, it's a beachfront. It probably will make you money, but it's not always the case. So, so far, I think, you know, I kind of find my niche and I think I will explore it more and take advantage of it. And if you could look, if you could give one piece of advice to someone who's try- planning on starting, let's say their uh, real estate and short term rental business, what would that uh, advice be? Oh, both. Okay. <laughs> um, do a lot of research and, you know, educate yourself and listen to your podcast to get some tips. <laughs> I you heard do, it here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I love hearing what other hosts say because there's just so many situations and so much valuable information you can get from it. So I feel like you should listen a lot before you try to do it on your own. Um, and just less is more. Don't, don't put too much furniture. Don't put too much items in your homes you know, kind of set it up for them to be comfortable, but just enough. Um, Take good pictures. Professional pictures is the key. (laughs) Um, You know, get as many reviews as possible to have visibility on Airbnb. I mean, there are so many, so many things that you can do and the information is out there. So I think education is key here. And where do you see short-term rentals going in the future? I think, I think it's a blooming business and I know it can get a little more saturated, but I think by local government, you know, zoning rules and all that, it kind of weeds out those that are not there legally or not doing that well. And I also feel like if it's a good quality property, it's always going to get booked no matter what. Um, And I think a lot of people do like vacation rentals versus hotels because it's more like a personal touch and they support and love that. Um, So I think I think we're going to do good. Awesome. And uh, wh- what what's a question that you have maybe for uh, a host that's in a similar position than you or maybe the next step of where you'd like to be? If you could ask them uh, a question, what would that be? I guess I would say, why would you why would you be in this business? I think it's a valid question to me, you know, because it's not for everyone. And a lot of people don't even want to deal with it in the first place. They feel like it's overwhelming and it takes a lot of their time being away on um, even to go on vacation, you you constantly have to be on your phone, uh, almost kind of keep an eye on it to to make sure everyone is happy and there is no emergency or something is going on. Um, so yeah, I would I would definitely ask them why they're doing it and if they're enjoying it, and you know, kind of go from there. Awesome, yeah, definitely finding out why uh, you're doing this business. It's it's that is a good question to figure out. Uh, you know, what what's the benefit? Is it just because it's a good, you know, good way to make cash or is it because you enjoy the hospitality and, and you enjoy this business? But thank you so much, Irina, for taking the time out with that. Is there any way that anybody can reach you? Uh, what, what's a good way to be able to find you, Irina? You can find me. I am on Facebook, Irina Roth in St. Petersburg, Florida. Um, I have a page on Facebook again, Irina Roth Realtor. And uh, I have a website that's uh, www midshomes.com so it's spelled m-i-d-z homes.com and m-i-d-z is actually the name of my company and it's just first initials of uh, my husband and two of my kids so I feel like it's a little you know special to me Um, but yeah you can find me online and um, any questions you can call me email me I'll be happy to help awesome well thank you so much Irina and until next time host nation keep on hosting Hope you host benefited from the show. If you found value, please go on over to iTunes, leave us a review, and let us know what you enjoy about the show. If you'd like to talk to hosts that have been featured in these episodes as well as the community, go on over to our Facebook group, The Host Nation. 